Hello everyone, uh, this is lesson 9 of solar energy application and today we want to discuss about, talk about solar collectors. Uh, if you remember, in lesson 1 we discussed about various renewable energy types like wind, solar, biomass and others very shortly. Then in lesson 2 to lesson 8 we talked about Sun Earth geometry and uh, solar radiation modeling and uh, these uh, were the topic from lesson 2 to 8 uh, if you want to see the recorded video of the previous lessons from 1 to 8 just go to the YouTube channel written here and all the uh, course uh, courses will be available there Today we will discuss about solar thermal collectors used for heating and this is a very important topic. You may remember that uh, two mo main applications for solar energy are solar thermal and solar electricity. Uh, maybe uh, we will discuss two weeks about solar thermal and then go to solar electricity topic. Okay, the main uh, device in solar heating is a solar water heater. Uh, this is a solar water heater as you see here. A uh, solar water heat heater is comprised of a storage tank, uh, the collector and the structure. Uh, this is a thermosiphon system as you will see later, but if the system is a pumped type, then um, other uh, devices may be used in the system. Uh, what's the purpose? The purpose you can see here cold water is um, entered the solar water heater and uh, at the outlet you have uh, hot water as you can see here. So a solar water heater is used uh, to produce hot water which may be used for different applications. What are the applications? There are a lot of applications actually for solar heat in general, either solar water heating or solar air heating or others. Uh, as an example, you can see here some of them, for example, water heating in rural areas, in villages, for example, either as a public bath or for the homes, uh, water heating in cities and swimming pool water heating, which is a very common application in many countries. Combi system, uh, which means space heating plus service water heating, because you know that we have three main applications for heat in a building. The first is cooking, the second is service water heating, and the third is a space heating. Um, district heating is another application. District uh, heating means uh, that you are heating, for example, a large community, uh, a large quantity of buildings, either a small city or something like this, from a central heating uh, station. Industrial process heat, I think it has a very bright future and uh, not well known yet. Air heating for many applications, from agricultural application to desiccant cooling systems and others. Solar drying. Uh, solar thermal desalination and solar thermal cooling are among the two very important applications for sol solar heat and others. Let's uh, see together some examples. For example, here you can see a public toilet in Tehran where solar water heaters are used uh, at the top of the roof as you can see here. This is an application in a rural area. This is a public path in a village, as you can see here. Solar water heaters are installed here. Uh, they may be used for single or multifamily houses, uh, like the one you can see here. The owner uh, installed a solar water heater at the roof, on the roof uh, to produce hot water for service water heating. Uh, you may see such an installation. Uh, this is a very big social housing program in Brazil, I think. And a lot of uh, thermosiphon systems are installed here. Uh, this is another example where solar heat is used uh, for service water heating in an office building. And you can see a lot of collectors here on the roof. 
and much more you can see here which we name district heating system it is in a Danish tone um, uh, actually uh, let me show you what uh, is the meaning of district heating actually you have a central heating center where different uh, heating systems may be used either a CHP or gas boiler or something like this even a heat pump and you have a lot of collectors which is named which is called collector field and uh, output heat from the collectors is coming to a storage tank and then uh, support the main heating system which is used for a large quantity of buildings uh, solar heat can be used for in industrial heating also as I told you before and here you can see an application in rubber factory in Ras al Khaimah in United Arab Emirates um, the, another application you can see here in a gas pressure control system where generally gas pressure reduction system brings down the gas temperature and uh, heating is required there uh, part of the heating need can be covered by the solar water heaters another very interesting application for solar heat uh, while seems unusual uh, is solar thermal cooling actually in these systems you use the heat produced by the solar collectors to uh, to f f f heat this heat to the uh, to a thermal cooling system this is a hospital in Nicaragua where solar collectors as you can see here solar thermal collectors are installed on the roof uh, to support the cooling system here I, sh I I'm showing you the very simple schematic of a solar thermal cooling system here you have a collector field either maybe a non-concentrating or concentrating collector depending on the type of chiller and then you may have heating backup or heat storage then the heat is fed to the chiller which may be an absorption adsorption solid desiccant liquid desiccant or ejector chiller these are all thermal chillers and then the cold which is produced may be stored and if required you may have some types of backing like the conventional vapor compression system and finally this is fed to the building where cooling is required we may discuss about solar thermal cooling and solar electric cooling in another separate course uh, here is another application for solar air collectors in solar air collectors you heat air instead of water and this is an application for hair drying in Cuba uh, this is an agricultural application in general if you want to know more about what's happening for solar heat worldwide uh, you may see this report which is generally published each year mm, the latest one is solar heat worldwide 2021 which may be downloaded at the uh, at the shc i a s h c solar heating and cooling program website you can see the link here at the bottom right of the page it is a very informing report and we use some of the data in this lesson today as the first graph you can see here uh, the share of total installed capacity in operation here at the top the topic is in Persian and here you can see the uh, title of the graph in English this is the share of total installed capacity in oper operation by economic region in 2019 and as you can see a huge part of the whole solar water heater used in or installed in the world is in China with more than 70% following Europe with 12% and another 15% 15% is installed in other parts of the world so 72.3 percent belongs to china and if you compare it with the newly installed capacity by newly the graph uh, refers to the systems which are just installed in 2019 as you can see again china is the winner with you at uh, second and you can see a, sh a small increase here actually and a small decrease here 
So, uh, in summary, China is the winner in the world. Um, what are the possible applications in building for solar water heaters? Here I am showing you two main applications. The first is service water heating at the left, number one, and uh, space heating at the right, number two. Which is the main application for solar water heater in your opinion? What do you guess? What do you think? One or two? Or maybe a combination? Think about that just for seconds. Okay. The main application for solar water heaters in the world is service water heating. While uh, there, technically there is no limitation to use it for a space heating, but economically you know uh, we are somewhat behind so the main application uh, for the time being is service water heating in addition to service water heating there are also other applications like the combination of one and two which we call combi systems which is used for space heating plus service water heating also another very important application in some countries is swimming pool heating swimming pool water heating and uh, finally all together by all together i mean an application where solar water heater is used for service water heating for space heating and for swimming pool water heating but again as you can see here we conclude that the main application is in a uh, domestic heat water or service water heating as we call it uh, here you can see the distribution of solar thermal system by application for the newly installed water collector capacity in 2019 and as you can see 30 uh, for the average of the world 33 percent is for domestic hot water systems for single family home and 57 percent for the same but in large domestic hot water systems so adding these together you can see that 90 percent 90 is for domestic hot water just two percent is used for combi systems you may remember that this is domestic hot water plus uh, plus heating uh, space heating three percent for other applications like solar district heating solar process heat and solar cooling and as you can see the, the 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 share except in europe which is 13 percent is quite low in average for the world and in actually in some countries you can see that the share is zero and finally you have 5.5 percent share for the swimming pool heating and again you can see that this uh, comes from um, some countries like us australia netherlands and others where swimming pool is also used in general you can see that there is a um, quite different distribution among the application in different countries and it is very interesting um, but but in summary again I, I can say that the main application for solar water heaters is service or domestic water heating okay let's uh, have a review on the methods which we can classify solar water heaters actually what are the classifications of solar water heaters i classify solar water heaters in four categories based on type of collector based on type of flow circulation between collector and tank based on type of contact between heating and heat and heated fluid and based on heating back up in my opinion um, these are the main categories of classification for solar water heatings and let's start by collector type what are the collector or solar collector types in general solar thermal collectors as you can see here are classified into non-concentrating and concentrating type each one again may be classified um, in different forms but in general you can say that non-concentrating collectors generally produce lower temperature work with both diffuse and beam you remember these radiation types uh, by sure the effect of beam radiation is much more but uh, still they are capable of producing heat by diffuse uh, radiation also 
and no need to track the sun you know because generally it is not economical to track the sun in non-concentrating types of collectors uh, in contrast con concentrating type of collectors where you can see one of these to here there are also uh, other types this is called parabolic true collector there are also Fresnel type uh, uh, dish type and also another type uh, we we'll discuss about them later and uh, you can see that these are used for higher temperature producing actually higher temperature they work just with beam radiation actually diffuse radiation cannot be concentrated that's the reason and need uh, to track the sun because you know in order to concentrate the sunlight into a point or a line then tracking is required uh, today we just want to talk about non-concentrating type of collectors and their classification maybe in another lesson we uh, will discuss about concentrating type of collect types of collectors non-concentrating types of collectors can be classified into two main categories flat plate fp and evacuated tube etc collectors you can see here the uh, picture of the two the left one is a flat plate collector and the right one is evacuated or vacuum tube collectors let's uh, go into some details here you can see the components of a solar collector of flat plate type as you can see here starting from the top number one is solar glass generally solar glass uh, have a high uh, percent uh, actually lets high percentage of light to pass through it uh, generally they are low iron glass uh, then number two uh, is a copper or aluminium absorber plate where with selective or non-selective coating a selective coating is a coating where with high absorptivity and low emissivity you know if you have for example a dark colored surface it has a high absorptivity but the emissivity is also high by coating the surface with a selective coating then while you have a high absorptivity uh, still you have low emissivity of the surface between the glass and the absorber plate there is an air space generally maybe three four centimeter then number three are the pipes um, uh, here you have a mender, mender, mender design I'll show you what uh, it does it mean and uh, the pipes are generally welded to the absorber plate by ultrasonic or laser welding then you have number four which is a profile frame and finally insulation at the back um, here you can see it in another form starting from the top solar glass absorber plate pipes which are welded to the absorber plate um, the, uh, the profile frame and the insulation uh, here you can see a part of the data sheet for a solar uh, collector and as you can see for example it says that this uh, it's a, a selective collector the type is ms cover thickness which is glass is three millimeter in thickness absorber uh, tubes are copper the absorber material itself is aluminium the coating is a selective coating and the uh, pipe tubes and absorbers are connected by laser welding as i told you there is another type of welding which is named ultrasonic welding also frame material and limitation and so on we'll we'll discuss about we'll go into the details of data sheets in next lesson also here you can see the difference between uh, serpentine layout and harp layout in the left at the left you can see the serpentine serpentine or mindal layout where uh, there is on, there is just one pipe and uh, they are in series as you can see generally the pressure loss is higher but manufacturing is much easier and material used is also easier so the price will be less uh, here at the right you can see the harp layout where there is a collector here or header and the header at the top and there are 
tubes in between as you can see the water enters here at the bottom and then goes up uh, when heated and finally exits here at the top right so these are the two main layouts which are used in thermal solar thermal collectors of the flat plate type uh, and here you can see the, how it works in a very simple form it, this is a thermosiphon solar water heater uh, we'll discuss about thermosiphon later but uh, just uh, not to wait you more uh, thermosiphon in thermosiphon solar water heaters uh, the tank is at the top and the collector is at the bottom and the circulation of water between the tank and the collector is just by a natural circulation by gravity and a density difference uh, because of the temperature and there is no pump between the, the tank and the collectors here as you can see the cold water comes here this is the cold water pipe from tank to the collector to the bottom of the collector there may be one or two or more collectors uh, here it, uh, it is not shown but the two collectors are connected here and here at the top so the water comes here this will be distributed through the through the tubes here and finally by this side it goes to the hot water goes to the tank again and uh, the circulation as I told you is a natural circulation uh, if the tank is a minimum height above the collector because in this system the tank storage tank should be above the collector uh, uh, in order to for the natural circulation to happen otherwise there will be no natural circulation for example if you put the tank here at the side or at the, uh, in the bottom lower height than the collector and uh, what about evacuated tube solar collectors the story is somewhat more complex here there are uh, some types of uh, vacuum tube collectors at least four main types i uh, have shown here from the left all glass sydney or dewar type where there are there is nothing in the tube the heat pipe model the u-pipe model and the direct flow model there are some other uh, variants also but these four types are the main types of, uh, of uh, evacuated tube solar water heaters how uh, an evacuated tube solar collector works uh, as you can see here vacuum tube solar collector is comprised of uh, glass tube where there are two tubes outer tube inner tube the outer tube as you can see here is transparent so the line the light the sunlight passes through it and hits the second uh, glass which is the inner glass tube the inner glass tube inner side is uncoated by inner side I mean inside the tube and the outer side of the inner tube outer side of the inner tube is coated with selective coating and I uh, told you about selective coating before so let's uh, review there is an outer tube which is transparent there is an inner tube uh, which is not transparent the inner side uncoated while the outer side is coated so when the light passes through the first outer tube then it hits to the second tube which is the inner tube the light does not pass through it because of the selective coating it will hit up the inner tube the space between the two tubes is completely vacuumed this air is sucked out so by sucking out the air and producing a vacuum between the two tubes the heat loss by conduction and mainly convection will be decreased sharply like uh, an air pot or thermo flask you have seen uh, which is used for uh, for storing for example tea or a cool uh, drink so uh, this is how an um, evacuated tube solar collector is working let uh, me show you a video let's see it together uh, i took a video and uh, let's see what's here okay uh, i have 
to demonstrate the effect of vacuum space between the inner and outer tubes of a solar collector, vacuum tube uh, solar collector. Here I have two tubes, exactly the same tubes, at the same angle incidence. And uh, as you can see, one of them is on the right one is broken, and the other one is intact. Um, you, you can, can see here the two tubes, tube. this is the outer tube, tube which is transparent, this is the inner tube with uh, absorber coating on it, and uh, as it is broken then there is certainly no vacuum between the two tubes. Here the tubes are intact and uh, you can see here the support clip, the getter, which is silver color, shows that the vacuum is existing there, and um, uh, I want to show you uh, how the temperature between the two will be different. I poured, uh, I filled both of them with water, as you can see here, and put two temperature sensors. Uh, the thermometer here shows the temperature. Uh, as you can see, uh, the left one, uh, where the tubes are uh, intact, the temperature, water temperature is 81, while uh, for the right one, the temperature is around 64. And if I take the difference, you can see that the uh, battery is low, you can take the difference. Um, so the left one is 81 degrees C and the right one is 64 degrees C. And you can see that the difference between these two is just the effect of the vacuum space between the two. So you can see that it is very important. Just one point I want to mention is that the temperature you can see here is not the temperature which this uh, collector then in operation may produce for you because this let just know the fluid or water inside is completely stationary. In real case, uh, it is fluid, so the temperature may be lower. But I just wanted to show you the, uh, the difference between the two. Uh, you can see that there is a 17 degree temperature difference between the two. Just now, the temperature outside is around 31 degrees C. Okay, uh, I hope it was useful. Here you can see the details. As I told you, there is uh, an outer glass tube, uh, there is an inner glass tube, and selective absorber coating is on the outer side of the inner tube. And um, you can see here the tube also. Uh, the, the, there is, uh, there is as, as, as you he heard uh, maybe in the video, there's a support clip at the end between the two tubes uh, and also there's a getter coating at the bottom and the getter coating help you to check if the vacuum between the two tubes is still existing or not as you can see here if the vacuum verified then the color is uh, in silver and if the tubes are faulty or vacuum has been broken or outgassing has been uh, occurred then uh, the color will be changed to white and this shows you that the vacuum is lost uh, this is a picture from a thermosiphon solar water heater with vacuum tube collectors and as you can see it is completely different from the solar water heater with with flat plate collectors the Flow circulation will be also different because you may remember that there was a pipe. Let me show you once more here. I mean, in this case, you have two pipes coming out from here, uh, from the, at the bottom of the tank. Uh, I think this uh, there is a there's a there's a mistake here. I'm sorry because this pipe should be connected to the bottom of the tank. Okay, this pipe should be connected to the bottom of the tank. I will uh, I will uh, displace it in the PDF file which I will send to you later. Uh, okay, but in this system you cannot see the pipes. Actually, the water circulates within the tubes, as I will show you later. Here you can see how the tubes are inserted in a vacuum tube um, uh, solar water heater. Uh, thermosiphon type uh, how the tubes are inserted into the tank there are a lot of holes as you can see uh, equal to the number of tubes and here I showed you the procedure from first to last 
for inserting the tubes generally they are wetted and then they are pushed inside as you can see here there is a seal inside uh, and it's enough for the for the system to be sealed uh, still the pressure inside the tank is not so high so these are named non-pressurized type of systems and uh, how they work the, it's very interesting and as you can see here this is the tube which is inserted into the tank this is the tank the storage tank the interesting point here is that while the sun hits on the uh, on the surface of the tube the water inside will be heated and as you know then the water heated its density will be decreased so the water moves upward and the cooler water uh, will come downward as you can see here by blue color so you have a shear flow type actually in the tube uh, both downward and upward upward on the generally high top side and downward on the lower side of the system the next type of solar water so uh, evacuated tube solar water uh, solar collector is heat pipe collector if you remember in this system there is nothing inside the tube you let me show you here in the all glass type or sydney or divar type there is just water inside the tube in heat pipe system the story is different and as you can see there are some other devices in the tube this is the same as before the double tube vacuum tube the outer tube is transparent the inner tube is not transparent and coated then you can see that there is a aluminium fin which its purpose is actually to take the heat from the glass and transfer it to this tube the tube goes to the bottom of the collector and uh, includes a liquid at a low pressure for example water sometimes with some additional fluids and uh, at a low pressure when and then as you can see the fin transfers it heat to the copper tube here which in which contains uh, water at low pressure so the water will be boiled when the sun hits on the collector because finally the energy is transferred to the copper tube uh, when the water boils it its vapor comes here at the top to a point where we name it condenser this as you can see is copper heat pipe and this part of the heat pipe is called the condenser where the heat will be dissipated for example to the water or anything else which you want to heat by dissipating the heat the vapor will be uh, will be uh, condensed again and the condensate will be uh, will be directed toward the, the, the downward uh, to the tube again and the story will be will be repeated uh, i want to show you another movie of the component of a heat pipe solar collector let's I want to watch show you the, the structure, structure of, of the heat pipe, pipe evacuated tube solar, solar collector. collector. Let's, Let's start from the bottom. bottom. Yeah. Here, this you can see is the support clip and the getter at the bottom. Then you can see here. I, I, I take them outside actually. Um, you, you can see that this is the double glass. glass. And, and then, then there's, there's an aluminium fin you can see here. Uh, actually, the heat is transferred from the inner tube to the aluminium fin, and from the aluminium fin to the tube you can see here, and finally to the condenser part. Uh, there's a small amount of water, maybe some additional fluids, uh, a small amount in the tube, and then the pressure is very low. Uh, when the sun hits on the tube, it hits the tube, inner tube, and then the heat will be transferred to the aluminium fin. The aluminium fin to the tube there, the fluid inside will be evaporated, goes to the condenser part, and transfers its heat to the fluid which is passing through the outside the condenser part. In real case, it's something like this. Let me show you. Actually, you have the fin inside, like this. And, and this tube is also 
sight, so you, you cannot, cannot see the scene from outside, and this is something, something like this. This is a heat pipe evacuated to solar collector. The condenser part in a pumped or forced system generally is placed in a manifold, and the water will be passed uh, over it. And uh, in the thermosiphon type, the condenser will be inserted into the tank. Uh, the picture will be shown in the slides. Okay. And uh, again, uh, let me show you how the temperature, what's the temperature of the condenser part? It is very interesting. Uh, I, want I want to show you a uh, simple experiment, experiment again for the heat pipe solar collector. As, As you can, can see, see, the temperature, temperature outside is around 29. Let me rotate it somewhere. Okay, you may see it better. Okay. 29, and uh, I, just, I just want to show you what's the temperature at the condenser part of the of this device. It is not a um, correct way of uh, measuring the temperature because, uh, you know, it should be a special type of thermometer. But you can see that it is very hot, really very hot. And the temperature may go even up to 100 degrees C. So you can see that very high temperature may be produced by heat pipe solar collectors. And the third type of uh, vacuum tube solar collector is U-pipe model. In this is a type of system, again you have the glass tube, the same as before, outer tube transparent, inner tube which is coated inside. Uh, at, the, at, the, at the outer side, then you have a copper tube, as you can see here, which is like the U, letter U. So we name it U pipe system. It's a copper pipe, hot, cold water is entered here, and a hot water will be here out. The contact between the glass and the copper tube is generally by a fin like the previous one. You may remember that this uh, this is similar to the fin we had in the previous one in the heat pipe uh, model. There we had just one pipe in the center, but here you had two pipe uh, where the spawn is the entering fluid. Here goes to the bottom a U shape and then returns here and uh, warm water will be out here this is named u pipe model and uh, you can see here the completed form the water enters here distribute through the blue lines go to the bottom and then warm water will be up and collected in the next uh, header here the red color and will be out here and uh, finally the, uh, the last uh, uh, vacuum tube collector model is direct flow model model in direct flow model again you have the glass tube uh, as before and here there is a copper tube uh, the fluid the cold fluid in, will, in, will be entered here and goes to the bottom and then will be distributed around the pipe and will be in contact with the with the inner tube which is hot and uh, when it goes out here you will have hot water at the outlet uh, this is a picture from a direct flow model and uh, just uh, just another type of uh, uh, vacuum tube solar collector is a cpc model in the cpc model which is concentrated type uh, you have a, a reflector here at the back as you can see and uh, when this happens as you can see here also when the sun shines on the tubes it also it's the at uh, the reflector mirror here at the back and you will have some some reflecting light will be which which will be in will increase the fluid temperature inside the collector generally these type of um, uh, type of uh, uh, collectors while in some way are concentrating the sunlight are not in the category of uh, tracking uh, solar collectors because generally these do not need a tracking system okay in addition to the classification I told you before about the solar collector types they are also classified based on heating media which may be liquid as we discussed before 
also the fluid which is heated maybe air like the one you can see here which have many applications in cases where you need hot air you may heat water and the water will heat may heat the air in a in a heat exchanger but it's still possible to heat the air directly and another very interesting type of collector we have no time to discuss about that you may search about it uh, yourself is a solar collector where fluid inside the collector is a refrigerant and generally these type of systems are used in solar assisted heat pumps this is a keyword which you may do search yourself and do your uh, master thesis if you are interested and it's a very interesting topic another classification which is generally just for flat plate collectors is um, classifying them based on glazed or unglazed by glazed we mean that there is a glass here or glazing which may not be glass any other transparent material uh, at the top of the collector generally the role of the glass is to prevent heat loss from the hot absorber plate you may remember that this is the absorber plate either copper or aluminium which is welded to the pipe tubes and the glass here which is at a 3 4 centimeter from the absorber plate prevents the heat to escape uh, and if you do not have this glass then the system is named uh, the co collector is named unglazed type of collector generally they have more heat loss because there is no glass but the price is less and the price per square meter and these are generally used for low temperature application like swimming pool, pool or any other application which is needed what's the share of collectors in the world here you can see the distribution of total install capacity in operation in 2019 as you can see the world average is um, 68 for vacuum tube collectors then flat plates which have a share of 25 then unglazed 6.3 and air collector has just a 0.2 percent share if you have a look at the newly installed on 2019 then you can see that the share is still approximately the same an interesting comparison you can see here is the comparison with what is which is installed in Europe you can see that unlike the world average here in Europe uh, flat plate collectors are the winner with 80% of the share and then evacuated tube collector stands at the second place the same uh, situation um, still a lot a, a small increase from 80 to 73 but as you can see again for the, for the newly installed systems you can see that again flat plate collectors are more common in Europe here you can see the the the, the top 10 countries of accumulated water capacity let's have a review on just five first five countries you can see that China with a large difference with the second which is Turkey stands at the first with uh, most of the collectors uh, which are vacuum tube collectors then you have Turkey most of the collectors are flat plate then at the third you have USA where unglazed collectors are the winner and uh, Germany which again flat plate collectors as I told you before in Europe and uh, finally Brazil so you can see that there is a very big difference between the first and second rank here this is uh, the capacity of collectors installed uh, uh, where the unit is megawatt thermal if you want to, ch to convert megawatt thermal into square meters of collectors installed then you can use this formula approximately here you can see this in another form and this is the distribution of the thermal collectors installed at the end of by the end of 2019 here you can see that the world average dominates by the green color which is vacuum tube collectors and it also um, uh, has the main effect from China because you may remember that China has the largest share so if China is using vacuum tube collectors then the sh world uh, uh, world share will be affected by china whichever it is but if you look at the other countries you can see that there's a discrepancy among the countries and uh, please read this slide very carefully look at it very carefully it has very interesting uh, points and here you can see the new installed systems also the the trend is uh, the same approximately 
So finally, how when how I can decide to use a flat plate or a vacuum tube? When to use flat plate? When to use uh, uh, vacuum tube collector? The first is price certainly. Check the price, but after price, ambient temperature, solar radiation intensity, and water temperature, which you require, uh, are the three main um, uh, parameters which will be uh, will affect the collector choice. Here you can see it in a very summarized form. If you have low ambient temperature, if you have low solar radiation, and if you require high water, higher water temperature. Uh, then you should go to vacuum tube collectors and if they are in reverse then maybe flat plate collectors are better choice now uh, go to the second classification the second classification is based on the type of flow circulation between the collectors and collector and tank you may remember that there's a tank there's a collector the tank may be put above the collector where there is no need for the pump and the system is named thermosiphon and uh, the next is uh, the pumped or forced system another name for this system is forced i don't i forgot to write it but please remember that pumped or forced systems are the same in this system there's a pump here this is the pump between the tank and the collector and the pump will circulate the water between the two so there is no need for the tank to be put uh, above uh, the collector because if you put it below the pump will circulate the water and uh, there is no problem about that here you can see the appearance of a, of a thermosiphon system at the left you can see a thermosiphon system with flat plate collector and at the right you can see a thermosiphon with uh, vacuum tube collectors and if you uh, want to see how it looks about the pumped system here you can see it again at the left you have a pumped system or force system with flat plate collector and the same with vacuum tube collector at the right here you can see that there's a tank collector controller and pump station as i show you here in this system you have uh, you have a storage tank here you have collectors which are separate generally uh, there are connecting pipes which are used to connect the tank to the collectors and uh, then there's a pump station uh, which i'll show you in a later slide and controller what's pump station pump station is actually uh, like this here you have a flow meter generally you have the pump inside two pressure gauges or temperature gauges as you can see here these are temperature and this is a pressure gauge this line is connected to the expansion tank because you know that in any closed uh, system where the temperature is going up, up and down you need an expansion tank to compensate then uh, you may have other devices uh, for example this is a filling valve which is used to fill the system at the beginning so this is the pump station uh, which i show you uh, the, a third system uh, also in addition to thermosiphon and pump to four system is integrated collector storage in this system the collector which is the tube here the large tube you can see here uh, which is which acts as the storage system and the collector are the same actually the sun hits the storage tank and will warm it up this is also another type of uh, um, system which is not commonly used but there are also manufacturers for that if you want to see what's the share of thermosiphon and pump system in the world here is the average and you can see that the world average is dominated by thermosiphon but interestingly there is again a large discrepancy from us to asia excluding china here at the left you can see that most of the systems are thermosiphon while here at the right you can see that um, pump system are dominating and some countries in between again the graph is very interesting and i ask you, you kindly to go into the details and also here you can see the newly installed systems uh, which uh, the trend is approximately the same you can see that in average the world uh, share of pump system for the new installed uh, systems in 2019 has been increased from 43 to 65 
Okay, again the same question, when to use a uh, pump system, when to use a uh, thermosiphon system. Here I uh, put the advantage uh, and disadvantages of four system. Among the advantages of the four system are they are simpler to use in large systems. There is less heat loss from the tank. Why? Because the tank is not at the roof and uh, it is uh, placed in a protected area like uh, for example heating room uh, center or something like this less uh, load on the roof why because this, again the tank uh, storage tank is not at the roof on the roof the appearance is better because you don't have the tank storage tank on the roof and they are simpler generally to combine with common backup systems but there are also advantages and you can guess what they are the price is higher for the pump system and as there are more components then maintenance work will be higher okay coming to the third classification the third classification of solar water heaters is to classify them based on the type of contact between heating and heated fluids what are heating and heated fluids heating fluids is the fluid passing through the collector either city water or water plus antifreeze if there is a risk of freezing so heating fluid is the fluid which is circulating between the collector and the tank and do not use it generally uh, maybe used in direct systems and heated fluids a fluid is the fluid which you use uh, for washing your hand or others no if the heating fluid and heated fluids are the same then the system is named direct or as you can see here open or non-pressurized and if the heating fluid and heated fluids are not the same they are different or in are not in direct contact to each other then you you call it indirect or closed or pressurized system let's see what is saying first of all let's uh, have a look at the classification uh, in based on this type of classification solar uh, water heater types as we told you i told you before may be classified in thermosiphon and pump system Thermosiphon and pump system, as we told before, may be classified either based on the type of collector into flat plate and evacuated tube collector. Again, pump system may be classified into flat plate and vacuum tube collector system. Each of these now can be classified into two more classification or subcategories as direct and indirect. So, in general, you have eight systems. For example, a thermosiphon with flat plate collector of the indirect type, a pump system with evacuated tube collector of the direct type. Let's see what it says. Starting first, so in general you have eight type of systems based on this classification. The first is thermosiphon flat plate plate thermosiphon system with flat plate collector, and the system is non-pressurized or direct. Here you can see the appearance, and here you can see how it works. As you can see, there is one tank, the city water enters here, and the water which is heated goes out here for consumption, and the same water, please note, the same water will go to the collector and will be heated, so the system is direct, open, or non-pressurized system. This is a thermosiphon with flat plate collector. What's the next classification? Yes? Yes, thermosiphon with a flat plate collector of indirect or pressurized type. Uh, in, in, a in a short look, the appearance may be different, but if you go into the pipe coming out and going in, you can guess if the system is a pressurized system or not. Here you can see the inner detail, unlike the previous one. Look at this. There was only one time. Here you have two actually uh, an inner tank and an angular space here where which is connected to the to the collector in the annular space here there is water or water plus antifreeze if needed 
and this is the water which is which goes to the collector actually this is the heating fluid and the heated fluid which you use or consume is in the inner tank and there is no direct contact between the two so this is a thermosiphon with flat plate collector of the indirect type generally the tanks are something like this you can see that this is the inner tank uh, this is the outer layer here number four which is the heat exchanger actually the hot water from the collector comes here in the annular space which is shown red here and the water which you use uh, uh, for consumption enters for example here and goes out from here at the top you may see that it, it goes out from the bottom but if you see this be sure that uh, the pipe goes inside at the top because you are taking out the hottest water in the tank here you can see how it works uh, this is the collector the water hot water uh, goes to the outer space and will heat the cooled water which is in the inner tank okay classification uh, number three thermosiphon system with evacuated tube collector of the direct or non-pressurized type here you can see the system here it is what uh, how it appears or its appearance the cooled water in here from city water into an assistant tank with a floater the floater will uh, will decrease the pressure to the atmospheric pressure as you can see here there's an air vent so the pressure inside the tank is atmospheric so we name it non-pressurized system the water uh, which has an atmospheric pressure comes into the tank and please note the same water will go to the collector tube and you use the same water which is heated hot water outlet so this is a uh, thermosiphon system with vacuum tube collector of the DVAR type or all glass type uh, of the direct method. Now if you want to separate the two lines the water which goes to the collector and water which you use then the the method is very simple the solution is simple you should have a coil inside the tank in this system as you can see the water is entering here distributed into two paths the first path goes here like before go to the assistant tank a float assisted tank goes to the to the storage tank and fills the storage tank and also the collector the water which you are using come here and then to the inside coil you can see it may be about maybe 20 30 meter length of coil and then goes out here the hot water as you can see fluid inside the coil is pressurized why because the pressure is the pressure of city water while here in the collector and the tank fluid outside the coil in the tank and the collector tube is not pressurized but we name this system pressurized so you can see that by pressurized or non-pressurized we mean the hot water which is coming out of the system next classification it is a pumped system with flat plate collector of the direct type here as you may remember the collector may the tank may be placed anywhere even at a lower height from the collector the hot water coming out of the collector go to the pump station and then to the to the uh, to the to the tank and here you can see that if the the, the 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 if you have separated the 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 water inside the tank with the water which is circulating through the collector the system is called is called indirect system so you can see different system here and let me go to the this is a slide where uh, 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 speaks about the decision scheme about uh, direct and indirect solar water heaters again the first one is price the next is water hardness the third is ambient temperature and anti-freezing problem and finally available installation about height about point of use regarding price do it yourself check regarding water hardness if uh, the water hardness is high then indirect solar water heater is recommended because 
because uh, uh, if you use a direct system then the scale build up in the inner surfaces will be high in this case the next is ambient temperature and freezing problem as you can see here if the ambient temperature is low and there's a risk of freezing antifreeze should be used in the collector path and it's clear that you cannot use a direct system in this case so indirect system should be used and uh, the third is available installation height about point of use if uh, there is a small height difference between solar water heater and where you use the water then it's better to use an indirect type of collector and if you have adequate height difference between solar water heaters and point of use then you may uh, use a direct system which is generally cheaper and uh, finally the last uh, classification is based on type of heating backup system what do we mean by backup see here this is the distribution of heating need in a building for example during different months of the year from january to december as you can see the heating need uh, is different in different months of the year if you use a solar water heater, uh, please note that solar water heater is not generally used to cover all the needs through all the year. It is technically possible, but please note that it is not economically possible. So we generally use, we generally cover part of the uh, heating energy needed, for example, for the solar, uh, for the wat domestic hot water by solar energy. The ratio of the energy which is covered by solar water heater to the total energy which is needed for the system is named solar fraction so solar fraction as you can see at the bottom is the percentage of total heating energy covered by solar so for example if you say for example in this picture solar fraction is 40 percent that does mean it does mean that 40% uh, of the heating energy needed is covered by by solar so what's about but about the remaining 60 percent the remaining 60 percent which is here uh, should be covered by a heat backup system actually the 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 solar fraction actually depends on the type and size of the system and also on the climate for example here we have we did uh, 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 we made a research for example for different cities in Iran these are the name of cities here the darker color is the is vacuum tube collector and the gray one is the is flat plate collector and uh, the height of the, co the the bars here shows the solar fraction as you can see here the green part we it's supported by solar system and the remaining uh, to 100 percent should be supported by the backup system so you can see that if we choose the same system for different cities for example here Boucher or Bandar Abbas are among the hot climates in Iran Tabriz and John Khoi are among the cold climate Ramsar is a uh, cloudy climate of Iran uh, so you can see that for these colder cloudy climate the solar fraction is less but you may reach to more than 90 percent for climate hot climates for example in the southern part of Iran so what are the backup systems generally the common heating uh, systems for the buildings in Iran at least are in these three types there may be a central heating system here at the left you can see it. there may be a combination of gas water heater and, uh, and uh, which is used just for uh, domestic hot water not for a space heating and a space heating will be provided by gas heater like this one this is a very common system in Iran and then there may be a packaged boiler system the packaged uh, boiler uh, generally provides both a space heating and service water or domestic water heating so uh, the type of backup system actually depends on many parameters the first is type of existing building heating system either is it central heating package system or gas water heater the story is different for each one the next is type of solar water heater is it a thermosiphon is it a pump system what is the type of collector and so on the third is source of backup heat either it is electricity or gas which are the two most common backup systems 
and there may be other consideration also this thing like price and others the first uh, uh, which I want to show you is a it is a thermosiphon system in thermosiphon system the first and simplest way of backup heat is to insert uh, an electric heater like the one you can see here or here generally at one of the ends of the storage tank which is horizontal and uh, an electric heater which may be may have a capacity of between two to four kilowatt generally uh, is inserted and whenever the temperature in the tank is not um, enough then the electric heater will be turned on this is the first and simplest method uh, the system the same system may also be used in pumped uh, um, pump models in this system as you can see here there's a heating element in the middle part of the tank the this coil here the connector is connected to the collector as you may remember and here you have uh, immersion uh, an immersion heater electric heater the hot water outlet is at the top the system is shown here in another form here you have an electric heater this is the heating coil which is connected to the collector and whenever the water temperature is not enough then a signal is come coming from the controller to the electric heater and turn it on but in many cases a gas uh, backup heating is more common here you can see the method which we used for thermosiphon system uh, where solar water heater is used as a preheat what does it mean preheat means that the water is first entering the solar water heater if the temperature is enough then it will go directly by this pad look at the pointer this pad to the consumption point but if the water temperature after exceeding the solar water heater is not enough for example less than 45 degrees generally which is the set point generally used 45 below 45 above 45 if it is below 45 then here there's a there's a kit here and the water is directed to the gas heater or package heater whichever applies and then goes out here 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 and goes to the consumption point generally you can do it without using the service kit here but it is not recommended for example if you pass the water in all cases through the gas heater it is not a recommended practice and it's better to use this kit here if you have a pumped system and want to use a gas backup system then this is the method you can see here this is the collector pump station expansion tank and controller as you may remember i i just forgot to say what's the purpose of the controller in this system the controller function is to turn on and off the pump based on the temperature difference between the collector and the water in the tank so whenever if there is a need to start the pump it will start the pump and when there is no need to start the pump for example suppose that in the night the weather outside is cold and if it turns on the pump then all the water which you heated during the day through the day will be uh, will be transferred to the collector and uh, the heat will be wasted and it will cool the water in the tank so the controller will turn on and off the pump depending on the case it may have also other functions but this is the main function of the controller so the water from the collector always come to the lower coil don't forget that the lower coil as you can see is connected to the solar collector and there's a coil up there is an upper coil here which is connected to the backup system here you can see the details of the tank this is the lower tank which is connected to the solar you can see here solar return line solar flow line to the lower coil the upper coil as you can see here is connected to the heating system it, it is this is the heating return line and this is the heating flow line okay the water which you want to use is entered here this is the cooled water city water is entered here at the bottom of the tank and here at the top as you can see you will get the hot water this is how the system looks like this is the backup heating system which is connected to the upper coil 
this is the lower coil which is connected to the solar collector an interesting application as I told you before which is not uh, still economical in many regions is the combi system you may remember that combi system is a system where you use both space heating and service photo heating with solar support in this system you should in some way uh, do something in the tank uh, to enable your heating system to provide heating both for the space heating terminals which are radiators, fan coils or something like this and also provides heating for service water heating there are different methods available in, you can see the data sheets from the manufacturers for example I put here another method here you have a coil for example for domestic hot water where the cold water is until here and then out here the system um, uh, the output of the system goes to the radiator the fan coils and also to the water in the tank the collector is connected to the lower coil here you can see that it is not connected to the upper coil and the upper coil is used for domestic hot water okay we had a very short and quick review on, uh, on uh, solar water heaters and their classifications I hope you enjoyed it uh, next week uh, or in the next lesson we will study solar collector thermal performance parameters and uh, we'll go into more details of the data sheets of solar collectors and solar water heaters. Thank you and take care.